So today I'm here to do my wrap up for the month of May and I read a total of six books which is better than last month. It is better but I did read like a novella so I don't know if that really counts but I'm excited to get into the books that I read. The first book I finished was Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare and I say that I finished this book because I did finish it on the second day of the month because I read a majority of it last month. But I just didn't finish it in time which was kind of upsetting because like I didn't manage to get a reread of a Cassandra Clare book done last month but I got this one read and it's so good to be back in this world. Like I honestly love Tessa so much. Like, she is my favorite main Cassandra Clare character. Like, you either have Clary, Tessa, or Emma. They're the three main characters, but there's a lot of characters, but they're the main ones. And she is my favorite. And just having Will and Jem again, and just I love it. And Charlotte and Henry, and it's just so good. And just like you know, even though I do know what's gonna happen, it's still a really fun experience being able to have the angst again because it's killing me. But I just like you need to reread this, like because it's such a great trilogy and it's just amazing. So the novella I read was of course A Chord of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. I could not say that. I was like... Ugh, uh. But there is so much hate going around this book at the moment. Like I didn't realize people would be so mad at this for being like not a novel and not having a plot. Like it's a novella. We're meant to just be seeing the characters happy and seeing like the aftermath of the war. And yeah, it's meant to give you a few little snippets of what's to come, but it's bridging, you know? It's just a fun little story. And Sarah Jemez has had a few things happen in her life and she is pregnant right now so you can't expect a lot from her and to have this book was still great and everyone is hating on it and I feel really bad for Sarah but I feel bad on her behalf because everyone's being so mean about it and like yes okay I know I know that there's no plot to this but again this has always been like a very character driven like series for me so I was just here to see what the characters were up to and I had a fun time with this book I thought it was really good so people can complain but don't bring it here the next book I read was finally King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard and like yes oh my god a long time coming but I needed at least a year after Glass Door because mate you know how I feel about that book, but I am so glad that I have finally read this book. And I have Warstorm here to read, and that book is bigger than my whole entire existence, so I don't even know how I'm going to get through it. But at least I read this one, so I'm at least closer to getting to Warstorm. Like, if I still had King's Cage to read before I bought Warstorm, I would have been like, holy shit. But I am happy. It was better. It was definitely a step up from Blast Door. Like, not, not as good as Red Queen. Like, I don't think it's ever going to get back to the level of Red Queen, but it was a step up and that made it a bit easier to read and you know I don't want to talk too much about it because it's like a third book in a series but like I don't know if I'd recommend the series or not but you know I'm just happy I read it. I read Always and Forever by Larry Jean and yes I finished a series I've only read like three and it's nearly halfway through the year. I don't know how my goals are going to be going right now because I think I've failed at every single thing in my girls video so hopefully in the next seven months maybe we'll make a comeback but I don't know. But I'm so glad to finally finish this story and to know what happened with Lara Jean and just like this trilogy is so easy to read. If I've only read, you know, three books and it's been more than half over through the month, I'll just read one of these books and it brings me right back up because they're just so quick to read. They're so much fun. Like they're such a doer of contemporaries and the relationships, man, mm, I love it so much. And again, it's the third book, so I don't want to spay too much, but like this trilogy is amazing and one you should definitely read. And then I read Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. And again, such a great story. And I'm happy that I actually managed to catch up with my rereading. So more good for Clockwork Princess next month. So I'm caught back up. Fifth book I've reread. It's actually so interesting rereading the Cassandra Clare books though, because like, again, I do know what's going to happen and I'm kind of not feeling as connected to the story. Like I'm really excited about reading Tessa's story. When I was reading The Mortal Instruments, I wasn't really like there for it like I do want to reread it but like I don't know like it's just finding it like really hard to get through and I don't know why but damn it's getting intense like the angst the angst of this book is killing me like everyone knows what happens in this book with the main characters like the main love triangle it's all happening but it's so amazing and I just really enjoyed it okay so the last book I read this month I'm kind of scared to show because there's a lot of controversy going around this book and I just want to let you guys know that I in no way support this author for what they have done and for things surrounding them but I read 13 reasons why by Jay Asher and I feel like people are gonna hate me for this I know the allegations that were against this author and I know all the bad stuff and it's just like how probably Problematic this book is like I know it all I do recently I've been wanting to watch the TV show it's a very like touchy subject because like there's so much work put into the TV show that don't revolve around Jay Asher like there's so much people that put so much effort into the show and it's one I have wanted to watch but then everything came out and I got really scared and I did have this sitting on my shelf and I wanted to read it but like it's just trying to disconnect from what the author has been accused of and what they've done and just 
you know, like just having that kind of thing and like for the fact that they wrote about someone who got sexually assaulted and then they, it's just, it's horrible. But I felt that I needed to read the book before I watched the TV show and I know some people might not agree with that but I wanted to read it and I did give this book two stars on Goodreads because you know I do not want to support it but I wanted to read it and it is a very problematic book it's a very hard book to read like I mean it's not a big book it's quick to get through but like the problematic stuff that happens in this and it's just so hard to read and see someone who is just completely given up and actually takes that final step off to actually commit suicide and it's so sad to know that it's kind of made me more aware like you kind of want to look for the signs with people like you want to make sure that you can help someone this book did make me feel like completely helpless like to Hannah and it's not like I could do anything because she doesn't actually exist it's one of those books that's just like it was just a very weird exception to read this and just all that happened around it and like I will never really look at this again and I have started the TV show I'm watching it very very slowly because it is very hard to watch I've already cried like a heap of times in this show it's already getting to me and please just don't hate me for reading this there's quite a lot of hate around this book and you know so that is my wrap up though I'm quite happy there's a lot of Cassandra Clare though there's a lot of her books here like a pretty average amount of like what I actually read but like I did enjoy most of these except for that book but I did enjoy all of these I don't even know if there's a point to showing this but I bought 18 books and I only read six you know you saw the unboxing you know how bad this was and I actually bought two other books after that I bought the Biblio Squad's book pick of the month and I bought a new release that I'm really excited about so I had to get those two but hopefully I won't buy any books from now on. The fact that now when you buy stuff outside of Australia they're putting a 10% GST on it I don't know if I'm going to be as inclined to buy books anymore because they're going to make them more expensive like what is this like what is why are you doing this to us because we just want to be able to buy books and now you're going to make it heaps more expensive like think of trying to buy hardcovers now huh because like if they're $20 that's an extra two bucks on them that you have to spend and it's just like mate anyway guys thanks for watching this video i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you guys later bye